Hey, Sean's here, and this will be a guide on getting your VM set up for your repo server for a practice lab for the RHCSA exam. Now, I just want to point out this is not mine. This repo I found was just on GitHub. I think I found it off of a Reddit thread pointing me in the right direction. It's a pretty good lab. It contains a lot of sample tasks that you have here because if you didn't know the exam is lab based it's three hours long and you are fully doing tasks the whole time you're not answering any questions or anything like easier exams you are fully in a lab environment you're expected to know how to set up two servers so this is a good way to actually practice this and it goes much more in depth than the actual exam does so if you get to the point where you can do most of this in your sleep and you know everything that's going on in these tasks, then you're you're in a pretty good spot to actually pass the exam. This is a way to save yourself the trouble of spending all that money on the courses and classes for the exam prep, which I think is like $400, $500 just for the classes. And then the exam is like another $500. So this is a pretty nice free open source way to get some practice in and study for the exam. So the lab setup is actually not that difficult. It can just be a little bit overwhelming if it's your first time operating in a non-GUI environment with a minimal installation. So obviously the architecture of the lab is to have three servers. One will act as the repo server because in the exam environment, you are not allowed internet access. So you obviously can't just RPM install things. You need to have a local repository set up within the LAN, so to speak. And this server obviously is designated to serve that purpose. Now, the first thing you will need, of course, is the Rail9 ISO, which you can get from Red Hat Enterprises website. You will need to register for an account with them. So if you really care about privacy, just make sure you make a throwaway email for this purpose. You can download any real version you want. We're gonna use the Rail9.2 ISO image at this point in time. So now we will actually make the VM and I'm using VirtualBox, obviously. I'll guide you through this part as well just to make things a little bit easy obviously we're going to go with this iso i'm not going to do the unattended installation just because we want the more granular control over the entire process the rest of it is just one gig that's all we need set this to two cpus don't want to use too much processing power we'll set this to 32 gigs pre-allocate it just so it goes a little bit faster as well and that's really it you're done it'll go ahead and turn away at making the vm and we will come back once we are actually in the installation portion of the vm Okay, and here we are at the installation wizard. So obviously, I am the, in the United States, so I'm going to go ahead and pick this. It might take a second because it'll be a little bit laggy just because of the environment we're in. So it's going to ask you to do two tasks to get this set up. First one is this. It should already have it selected. But, you know, just go ahead and hit done. Then we'll need to set up a root password. Go choose whatever you want. Just know that if you don't make it that strong, it's going to have you click done twice. That's kind of annoying. And then regarding that, that's really all the tasks that we are going to do. We just want to go to software selection as well. And we're going to go to minimal install because we don't want all the extra stuff. We do want just the core files and commands and programs. Nothing extraneous. Makes things a little bit harder, but that's good because we want to practice. I'll go ahead and begin the installation and it'll take a bit. So we will, once again, go ahead forward. Okay, and now we can log in. We will just use root to log in. Now you can have this open on your monitor as well to make it a little bit easier to follow along, but it's fairly easy. So the first thing we want to do is actually make a mount point for the CD-ROM that's going to serve as the temporary repo for us. So we will go ahead and do exactly what it says there. We're just going to make this directory right here. Actually, we need to go back up. Make sure you are in the root directory. You can do that by doing CD backslash. And then we will go ahead and do that. CD-ROM. Okay. So next he recommends just doing block ID and you can do that too. It'll print out a list of the devices really that are 
mapped and mounted onto your VM. And you'll see here that we don't have any actually currently. So, or we, rather we don't have a ISO that's still mounted, which is because after the installation, it kind of unmounts it. So we need to just get that back on there. So we'll go ahead and do that. And if we run this again, you'll see it's now there right here. You can also see the label. 9.2 so that is confirmed as the iso so the command to actually mount this is you're going to do sudo mount then you will specify the actual drive rather the optical drive that the iso is mounted on which is this one right here of course dev sr0 we'll go ahead and do that make sure you don't put a backslash here because then that would signify it as a directory and we would want actually just the device and then we are going to place it in the CD-ROM directory and you can leave it like that and you'll get that, but that's good. So if we ls this ROM, you'll see that we actually have everything in this directory. Now, next we will need to put this entire config into this local repo file, which you will be making yourself in order to actually point the CD to this repo. So. We're gonna go ahead and do that. And we could copy everything, but I think it's always better for you to get the muscle memory going and actually type all this out. So we are going to actually do this all ourselves. You should see my rules, and then we'll call this a little bit. So if you're not really comfortable with the file, you are going to be a little bit more comfortable over here. We'll do that. I'm gonna really just learn all this out. So you wanna go ahead and do this yourself or just watch me. Feel free to do so, so go ahead. We'll go ahead and do this though, just to show you that's not really that. And just to kind of explain what these lines are doing. Uh, this Line here, of course, obviously is naming the uh, base OS image. This will be a type label that you can have it referred to. This is just setting it so that it doesn't expire because we put the negative value. This is enabling, of course. This is setting it to actually do a GPG check because we are going to supply a GPG key. This base URL, oops, let me go here. Set that equal to this. This will actually be where we are going to be looking for the base OS repo. Of course, this is our GPG key file. And that is the config for Webm. So on to the next. Also, be aware of the case sensitivity with this app stream in particular. I've had some issues that uh, arose from me not really paying attention to that. Just the uh, words of the wise. Kind of sucks because this is a fresh concept for us. We only get to actually do the fun part of this stuff, but all is well, ends well. I don't actually need to do that. I can use that as a template now, honestly. Anything can kind of yank this here. Okay, and your config should look exactly like this. Make sure you got all of the case sensitivity done well, or it might trip you up. So we'll go ahead and validate this, just make sure we actually have that in our repositories. We'll check the list first. And did I, oh, want to make sure you actually do this. And then we didn't find it in there. We'll check app stream. And we did find it in there. So go ahead and do this now. And you'll notice we're using DNF, which is for doors, packet manager, not RPM or YUM. That's just because again, we don't have any internet. So go ahead and do this. And we have this running. Can verify that with this. We actually have it, it's just not active yet. We can set it to enable. And that'll not start it. As you can see here. So we have to manually start it. And now we can see that it is running. And we do need also create repo. So we'll go ahead, get create repo C. Clear that. And now we will be copying the repos over to the HTML directory to have Apache actually serve that. That way, when we set up the other servers, they can pull from this source they'll basically use the cd that we have mounted right now they'll be using the files within that cd which will now be transferred over to this repo directory for our html server again served with apache and that's how they're basically going to access it that way we don't need the cds mounted on everything they can just pull straight from that both of them okay so let's go ahead copy and you do want to make sure you have the slash r tag because that will make it recursive. It's going to cheat. Make sure I can actually see this. And then we'll do that. 
and then we need to pick a target which would be this and var www.html is always like the default for web servers like nginx or apache this is kind of what they use so this is pretty easy to remember you should get used to seeing this and yeah you'll see a bunch of text on the screen oh we didn't enable the verbose text so you won't actually see all the text it'll just kind of wait a little bit it looks like it's hanging but it's actually not it's just doing a lot of copying right now give it a couple seconds and we'll use the verbose tag this time so you can see it with base OS. So that's good. Now we actually need to start being up to those changes. First, actually, probably take that. You can do this if you want. I'll probably do this because it's kind of It's SE Young. Conf. Make sure it's actually correct. Time to change. Okay. There we go. Go to the end of the line, press S, zero, quit. And that'll actually make it so that we don't get that warning every single time we run DNF. And then really lastly, all we have to do is add port 80 to the firewall. So this is also something you should get used to doing. Firewall command. And I have to cheat because I forgot. Add service equals should be HTTP. D, let me just make sure. Oh wait, it's HTTP because we're doing the actual port, not the service. I got myself a little bit confused there. But we'll also add the permanent tag to make it persistent. And you can see it's successful.